Hello, my name is Girish Patil. I'm an architect with AWS. And today I'm here to talk about uh, 10 most uh, commonly used or popular machine learning algorithms. We make these algorithms available in uh, SageMaker for you. Uh, so I want you to know uh, after this session which algorithm is appropriate for which kind of a task or problem that you're trying to solve. So before we dive deep into algorithms, let us quickly take a look at two broad categories of algorithms. One class is called as supervised algorithms. The other one is called as unsupervised algorithms. In supervised algorithms, you need to provide uh, inputs and outputs both for algorithm to train. Uh, in unsupervised, you don't uh, provide any outputs to the algorithm. The algorithm uh, learns by itself uh, to you know, do the stuff that you want it to do. So here is how a supervised uh, algorithm works. What you're doing here is you're supplying a lot of uh, inputs to the algorithm and you're also telling it what are the right kind of outputs. The outputs could be a various values that you are trying to predict or it could be a yes no type of a variable or it could be a category. And you provide lots of past inputs and lots of known outcomes to the algorithm and algorithm builds a model for you. Now this model has learned from the data and if you present it with unseen input, it will be able to predict what should be the output. Again, this output would be a variable uh, or it could be yes, no type of an answer or it could be a category. This is uh, how unsupervised machine learning uh, look like. Uh, you provide a lot of uh, examples to it or a lot of items to it and it is able to categorize them. Now, uh, categorization may look uh, a simple thing to do uh, or a trivial task, but it can achieve phenomenal results or business outcomes for you. So once we start seeing unsupervised learning algorithms, uh, you'll be able to appreciate it. But here I want to highlight one point that I, although we are categorizing things in different categories, we are not telling the algorithm uh, what are the categories. The algorithm discovers the categories by itself. That is how unsupervised learning is different from supervised learning. Now, before we uh, end this part where we discuss basics of algorithm, let me also quickly explain you how deep learning is different from traditional statistical machine learning. So here uh, I have shown in a very simplified way the workflows for statistical machine learning and deep learning. You'll see what is happening is you have data and you do feature engineering on that data and you obtain features and that is how statistical machine learning uh, you know, get its input and then it builds the model which can be used to predict future outcomes. Whereas in deep learning, all you do is you feed the data to the system or to the algorithm. You don't uh, help with feature engineering. So when you are training it to tell dogs from cats, you are not going to take measurements of tails of dogs and you know colors of cats and things like that. It is the algorithm that is going to build a model and that model is automatically going to know what are the right kind of features which tells dogs from cats. So it is many, many uh, uh, applications where you don't know what are the important features. Uh, in those cases, deep learning comes in very handy. So this is a simple table that shows the 10 algorithms that we are going to uh, talk about uh, today. And it also highlights uh, sample applications. Uh, we will revisit this table in the end. But this table uh, uh, would be pretty useful to you when you're trying to discover which is the right algorithm for your use case. Now, having seen these basics, uh, let us uh, dive a little deeper into individual algorithms and let us see which algorithm fits which use case. Uh, in the beginning, we'll review supervised uh, algorithms and uh, uh, towards the end, we will review the unsupervised algorithms. So the first uh, algorithm uh, is linear learner. Uh, what it helps you with is regression tasks and binary classification tasks. I'm sorry, regression tasks and binary classification tasks. In regression tasks, you are trying to predict a certain value. For example, the amount of discount that you should offer to a customer or uh, the amount of uh, raise that you should give to an employee to retain him, right? It's a value. And in binary classification, you are trying to figure out yes, no type of answers. For example, whether a customer is likely to leave your business, right? Uh, that's a big loss, right? So you want to be able to figure out from a customer's behavior, whether he is likely to stick with your service or he's going to uh, 
uh, move to a competitor. So those are yes, no type of answers. So linear learner helps you in these type of scenarios. The next uh, algorithm is boosted decision trees. You ha may have heard of this algorithm elsewhere because this is a very uh, famous algorithm these days. A lot of uh, data science competitions have been won uh, with help of uh, this algorithm. And it's an extremely versatile algorithm. It can do regression, that is predicting a value. Uh, it can do classification or it can do ranking. And in classification, uh, it, can't, uh, it can uh, not just do binary classification, but it can also do multi-class uh, classification for you. And uh, the nice thing about this algorithm is it is efficient and at the same time it provides you a lot of hyperparameters. So you have a lot of control on behavior uh, of the model that gets prepared uh, by running this algorithm. The next uh, important algorithm that we are going to take a look at is factorization machines. Uh, so uh, the screen shows some stats. It basically shows the performance of this algorithm on SageMaker compared to elsewhere. Uh, so yeah, you can uh, uh, keep in mind that algorithms which have been made available to SageMaker, uh, they achieve the results and in most cases they achieve uh, them in much, much faster compared to anywhere else because of the efficient implementation that Amazon engineers have done. So, so having said that, uh, let me show you uh, why factorization machines uh, exist or what kind of tasks they help you with. So the next important algorithm that we are going to review is factorization machines. Uh, whatever you are seeing on the screen is the performance of this algorithm uh, on SageMaker. So this is a very uh, compute heavy kind of algorithm uh, and uh, you can see that uh, it has superior performance on SageMaker compared to elsewhere. So you might have a question why you use factorization machine or what are the use cases of it. So let me show you one example. Uh, but yeah, before I go to uh, my example, let me state that uh, this uh, algorithm helps you with binary classification and regression tasks, basically. So uh, here is my example. Uh, you have a table that is basically a user movie rating table. Basically, what rating a user has given to different movies. Uh, there are typically millions of users and thousands of movies. You don't watch all of them, but uh, you end up uh, rating some of them. Uh, so uh, an important thing for a streaming service is to figure out which movies that you haven't watched uh, are such that you may like them if uh, the service provider recommends those movies to you. So uh, that's a very important task because that will ensure that uh, people watch mo more movies on your service and that ends up in higher revenue for you. So how do you achieve that? So one of the ways of achieving it uh, is shown on the next screen. Uh, that involves uh, treating this table as a matrix. Uh, so uh, the table becomes R matrix in this uh, case. And then you figure out two matrices, uh, one uh, referred to as user uh, uh, matrix and the second referred to as movie matrix. Uh, these matrices are such that uh, when they are multiplied again, uh, you get the original matrix. Uh, so let me show you uh, with example, if it is not uh, very clear to you. Uh, but before I go uh, to the next screen, uh, let me quickly highlight this fact to you that in the user matrix, uh, every user will have a corresponding row. And uh, those uh, rows are vectors representing that user and they will have k elements or factors. They are called as latent factors. Similarly, every movie will have a column representing it. Uh, those are again vectors and each with k elements. Those k elements are referred to as latent factors of movies. Now these latent factors are very interesting because they represent the characteristics of users as well as movies. So uh, this is what I wanted to show you. I have taken the same original matrix and uh, we uh, did uh, matrix factorization and we multiplied the outcome matrices and we got what we are seeing on the right hand side. So as you can see after matrix multiplication we were able to recover the values uh, at the same level uh, in red circles. So re red circle shows the ratings that were known before. So for example user 1 had rated Star Wars at 5 and Inception at 3. 
uh, even after matrix multiplication the uh, ratings remain the same or pretty close and the multiplication process also results in figuring out values in green circles so these are the values that were not known before uh, so since red circles are having values uh, uh, which are closer to the past values uh, what we are doing is probably the right thing so you can assume uh, and it can be uh, verified experimentally that the ratings that are being uh, predicted here in green circles are uh, what user might end up doing once he watches that movie so this table tells you that user 4 might like godfather but he might not like inception so you recommend godfather to that user so this is how matrix uh, factorization works uh, this is relatively easy to explain but the problem is uh, every matrix will have millions of rows and thousands of columns so this process becomes very uh, cumbersome this is a summary of what i just discussed before uh, i go more in details of performance so uh, coming back to my point of performance uh, this is a very compute intensive process and sometimes you just don't have two uh, dimensions here we have two dimensions users and movies uh, you can have a third dimension like location you can have fourth dimension as time like some movies that you want to watch on a sunday you don't want to watch on a weekday so if there are more variables uh, this uh, technique that we discussed it cannot figure out the relationship between those various combinations of variables so in such situations matrix uh, factorization comes to our help it's a very powerful algorithm and its implementation on SageMaker is very efficient. The next algorithm that we are going to review is sequence to sequence. Uh, so as name suggests, uh, the model that is prepared uh, with help of this algorithm, it will ingest a sequence and it will output a sequence. So what are the kind of scenarios uh, you would want to uh, handle with sequence to sequence kind of a model? So this uh, screen uh, lists out various possible scenarios. I am going to focus your attention on two particular. Uh, in this scenario, we are accepting multiple inputs and we are outputting a single output. Uh, so this kind of a model can be used uh, in case of sentiment analytics where you read a user review and at the end you say whether that review was positive or negative. So that's a single outcome. Uh, the next example I want to point your attention to is uh, translation. So you have a sequence as an input and a sequence as an output. So you can have a Chinese statement as an input sequence and an English statement corresponding to that Chinese statement as an output statement. So sequence to sequence uh, comes in handy in a lot of scenarios. And again, the implementation of this algorithm on SageMaker is very efficient. I highly recommend you to take a look at it for your sequence to sequence requirements. The next uh, important uh, algorithm that we are going to take a look at is image classification. So image classification is uh, a very, very popular problem uh, because uh, if you can classify images, you can achieve so many things. Uh, and there have been various techniques for image classification. But the current state of the art results of image classification, which even uh, exceed the human capabilities, they have been possible because of deep learning. So SageMaker uh, image classification algorithm, it uh, makes use of deep learning. It provides you with uh, one of the most successful uh, network architectures, which is known as ResNet. Uh, you can uh, change the size of the network and things like that. And you can uh, train a network from scratch. So that's excellent because that doesn't require you to know ton of deep learning. Yes, you need to understand fundamental concepts, but if you can bring in a lot of training label data, you can train your image classification model. So I want to intuitively explain you how image classification works uh, in deep learning world. So this is a very simplified, uh, you know, representation of a, a deep learning model. And uh, you have sh shown it picture of a husky puppy. Uh, it uh, it will have uh, multiple outputs for different classes uh, for which it is trained and the output which corresponds to this husky puppy it will go high if the picture is of a husky puppy if you have another output uh, you know which represents a bird if you show the picture of a bird to it that output will go high so that is how uh, it works out yes the actual networks are going to be very very complex but you get the idea so uh, since we are talking of ImageNet classification, I want uh, to discuss ImageNet challenge with you. 
बिकॉज दिस चैलेंज चैलेंज दिस वेरियस टीम्स टू ट्रेन देयर मॉडल्स विथ इलेवन मिलियन लेबल्ड इमेजेस अक्रॉस इलेवन थाउजेंड कैटेगरीज सो द लीडिंग मॉडल्स विच हैव द बेस्ट एक्यूरेसी दे कैन यू नो क्लासीफाई लार्ज नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स दैट वी सी इन एवरी डे लाइफ एंड लॉट ऑफ दीज मॉडल्स आर अवेलेबल फॉर फ्री सो दैट कुड बी अ वेरी ग्रेट स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट फॉर योर इमेज क्लासीफिकेशन टास्क्स और प्रोजेक्ट्स बट द थिंग इज इमेज नेट हैज बीन ट्रेन फॉर अ सर्टन काइंड ऑफ यूज केस वॉट इफ योर यूज केस इज डिफरेंट I want to give you an example. Uh, can you recognize this scene? Which show it is from? Okay, I'll tell you if you haven't seen it. This is from very popular uh, HBO series Silicon Valley. Uh, this is a group of uh, techies who are trying to create a new business, and they have a friend Jin Yang. He is otherwise very annoying, but he had some uh, good qualities. and he's a very funny guy in general and what he does in this show is he builds an app okay all that this app does is it tells whether a food is hot dog or it is not hot dog it sounds funny but he manages to sell that app for 50 million dollar it's crazy but you will have to uh, see the show to uh, understand the story it's very funny so what this guy does to uh, build an app that can tell hot dogs from not hot dogs so these are some sample screenshots from his app so uh, the leftmost image it can tell that it's a dog and it's not a hot dog right so how how does he do that so what it does is known as transfer learning in the world of deep learning so in transfer learning what you do is you take a model which has been trained in another domain like you take a image net model and you train or rather retrain that model to identify the kind of objects that you are interested into so this is how transfer learning looks like you take a convolutional neural network and you just uh, change the last classifier layer because now you don't have to uh, you know identify uh, which of the 11000 uh, classes that object falls into you just have to tell whether the object is a hot dog or it's not a hot dog so what you do is you just change the last classifier and you bring in some sample data of how hot dogs look like and how hot, not hot dogs look like and uh, with uh, very less amount of training compared to the original model uh, this model is able to come to the level of perfection that you want it to be at so it's very useful technique and image classification algorithm on uh, sagemaker enables you to do transfer learning in a very uh, simplified manner highly recommend you to take a look at it if that is what you are trying to do so uh, the next algorithm we are going to review is deep ar so deep ar is for forecasting forecasting is a very important uh, job you want to be able to uh, forecast weather you want to be able to forecast uh, stock market you want to be able to forecast uh, you know how much is going to be demand uh, for various products that are being sold by you uh, but the challenge uh, in all those cases is uh, uh, there are a lot of new categories of you know uh, things that you want to forecast on for which there was no previous data in such cases uh, deep ar is very useful it has all these nice characteristics uh, which have been mentioned on the screen uh, the most important is it learns a global model uh, second is it figures out complex patterns such as seasonality and uncertain growth uh, the next is uh, you know it doesn't require much uh, hyper parameter tuning it works without it and it can uh, scale to handling lot of time series so it can handle like more than 100000 time series so what is a global model and what is a related time series right so here is a depiction of demand for certain products uh, sold by your e-commerce site uh, uh, and uh, as you can guess not all the demands are independent L lot of product demands are related to one another when people buy drones they want to buy extra batteries uh, when you know people buy dslr cameras they want to buy tripods and things like that so a lot of demands are related to one another and uh, secondly uh, you know uh, these demands can be impacted by same common root cause such as holiday season and things like that so you want to have a global model rather than having individual model for each time series and deep ar helps you exactly with that so it's pretty useful and the uh, next best thing it does for you is 
since it's a global model if you start selling a product which was not sold by you before it is still able to forecast for it based on its knowledge of uh, similar products that you used to sell before so it's a very powerful and a very uh, handy tool uh, for forecasting requirements highly recommended if forecasting is what you want to do take a look at it uh, before we move from this topic uh, let us quickly discuss what is uh, cold start forecasting and what is probabilistic forecasting uh, deep ar uh, helps you with both so cold start forecasting is the cases that i mentioned before where you don't have much data to base your forecasts on so you want to uh, derive your forecasts based on similar categories or similar other products so that is cold start forecasting and dpr is particularly capable of it and second is probabilistic forecasting where uh, you don't want a single uh, you know uh, output uh, in the sense you don't want uh, a forecast like uh, you can sell 100000 cameras in this period you want a probabilistic forecast like there is a 80% chance of uh, selling 100000 products uh, and there is a 70% chance of selling 150000 products things like that so it's pretty useful in planning applications so uh, we have taken a look at important unsupervised uh, algorithms uh, so far now let us take a look at supervised learning algorithms the first algorithm is k means uh, clustering algorithm so what this algorithm does for you is that it helps you to cluster your uh, data into the number of clusters uh, that you specified uh, so this is pretty useful uh, in cases of say for example user segmentation where you are trying to group users in multiple groups uh, because users in a group behave similarly so if uh, offer uh, is uh, liked by one user in that group it is quite possible that that offer will be liked by other users in that group uh, you get the idea clustering is a very important task uh, that you do in uh, your machine learning uh, work uh, and k means clustering helps you to do that the implementation of SageMaker uh, of this K-means clustering is again um, very very efficient. So it helps you to handle large amount of data. So how clustering works? So this is a diagram that uh, tries to intuitively explain how clustering works. So uh, uh, the system chooses centroids for you in the dimension space and then it uh, tries to move the centroids in such a way that uh, for the observations within a cluster the distance is minimized and the distance is maximized between the clusters uh, take a look at this diagram uh, it is pretty self-explanatory uh, and this is how the system works the next algorithm we are going to take a look is principal component analysis uh, so per se it is by itself not a machine learning algorithm but what it does is it helps you uh, to reduce the number of features in your data so that your data becomes much more manageable so basically it will help you to remove a lot of noise from your data so that you can focus on only the most important features uh, if uh, this is still not very clear to you i would like you to show this diagram so in this diagram uh, we are seeing a two dimensional feature space and there is significant variability uh, in features across both the dimensions so what we are doing uh, is we are changing the coordinate system in such a way uh, that uh, those uh, blue and dark pink lines uh, become our new coordinate uh, x-axis and y-axis and in this new world in this new uh, dimension space or feature space you can see that there is not uh, much variation across uh, pc2 but there is a lot of variation across pc1 so uh, this is to say that there is a lot of variability in PC1 so PC1 is important and you should retain it and PC2 there is not much variability all the values are closer to zero so it is l noise it is not useful you can discard it so we reduced from two features or two dimensions to just one feature or one dimension this saves you a lot of computing down the stream uh, the next algorithm we are going to take a look at is LDA so LDA has become popular uh, in recent times. Uh, it is very useful when you're trying to group together multiple social media profiles or multiple news articles, right? If a user is reading a news, if you show uh, related news to that user, he's much more uh, likely to look at the related news as well. 
or if somebody is trying to search for a profile on a social network, if you show him uh, similar profiles, uh, the user is also likely to take a look at those other profiles. Uh, so here, uh, uh, LDA helps you. Uh, it helps you because it can uh, digest huge amount of text and it can figure out uh, the topics of those documents or topics of those uh, profiles by itself. And what it does for you is you don't have to tell it what topics uh, should those uh, documents be grouped under. Like you don't have to tell it to group news under sports or politics or you know entertainment. It will figure out the topics which are most common to uh, those documents and it will automatically group them according to the topics. Uh, so how does a topic look like, right? How does a topic manifest itself? So this is a sample output of uh, the algorithm. Uh, so the output is presented in forms of uh, probability distribution over the important words in that document. So topic one, uh, you see the probability distribution and in, uh, for topic two also you see the probability distribution. So in topic one, uh, 0.4 is the probability weightage given to meow and 0.3 is probability weightage given to sleep. So probably this is a topic about cats because they like to meow and sleep. And topic two uh, has probability distribution or probability weight of 0.3 for bark and 0.4 for play. So, uh, you know, dogs uh, like to bark and play. So this topic is probably about dogs. So uh, this is how it uh, manifests uh, uh, various topics and it figures them out for yours, you. And uh, this ability of uh, ingesting huge amount of text is very handy uh, when you are running uh, uh, social media companies or, you know, you are a media website. Uh, in many other use cases also, this is pretty useful, but uh, these are the domains where it is highly useful. The last algorithm that we are going to take a look at is uh, neural topic modeling. So it does uh, what uh, LDA does for you. Uh, it helps you to uh, discover topics and it helps you to uh, group your documents under the topics. But how it works operationally is different. So neural topic modeling uh, or NTM is based on neural networks. So it uses uh, something known as encoder uh, decoder architecture with attention. Uh, what that architecture means is uh, beyond the scope of uh, uh, this uh, session. But what I want to highlight is uh, this algorithm has achieved uh, some of the uh, recent uh, state of the art results. So you should try out both the algorithms LDA and NTM and you, ca you should uh, retain the model that gives you the best results. Uh, regardless of which one of them you choose, they're going to run very fast and efficiently on SageMaker. So this was the review of 10 algorithms. So what are our conclusions? Conclusion number one is SageMaker enables users like you to solve large range of problems with help of out of the box, highly efficient algorithms, right? These algorithms are out of the box. Uh, they're there, you just have to use them and their implementations are very efficient. And the next conclusion is, uh, which I didn't elaborate much on this session, but which you would have heard in previous session, is that while these algorithms are there, you can also bring in your own algorithms. Uh, you can bring in your own frameworks. No one is stopping you from there. You can still uh, benefit from uh, SageMaker's ability to uh, you know, run machine learning uh, training and host machine learning models. So that is what I wanted to discuss with you today. Uh, before uh, I end my session today, I want to do a quick recap of all the algorithms that we saw today. So we saw that linear learning uh, learner helps you with uh, linear regression, uh, which is uh, useful in predicting values like, you know, price changes and things like that. Linear learner also does binary classification for you, which is very uh, useful for yes, no type of questions, for example, for churn prediction. Uh, the next algorithm we reviewed was Exiboost. It does regression, classification, and ranking. Uh, it helps you with building decision trees. It helps you with uh, you know detecting anomalies. It is a really versatile algorithm, and that's a go-to algorithm for many, many classification tasks uh, these days. Uh, the next algorithm that we reviewed was uh, factorization machines. It has many, many interesting use cases, but one of the most common use cases uh, in building recommendation and personalization systems. Uh, then we uh, took a look at uh, image classifier. 
uh, it is useful in computer vision tasks uh, you can build models from scratch or you can use transfer learning to um, you know train an existing model to solve problems in your domain the next uh, algorithm we reviewed was sequence to sequence it can help you with you know machine translation speech to text conversion and things like that uh, the next model we reviewed was deep ar it helps you with forecasting the model after that we reviewed was uh, k means clustering it helps you with uh, customer segmentation and classification of documents and things like that uh, the m m algorithm that we reviewed after was principal component analysis uh, uh, as i said this is not a machine learning algorithm as such but it helps you to uh, remove a lot of noise from your data so uh, that is known as dimensionality reduction and that's a go to algorithm for uh, such use cases uh, the next one uh, that we saw was LDA. Uh, here is the full form of uh, LDA. Uh, it is latent Dirichlet allocation. Uh, this is a very powerful algorithm for uh, topic modeling. And uh, the last algorithm uh, which we saw was uh, neural topic modeling, uh, NTM. Uh, it is used for uh, document modeling. Uh, it can also be used for topic modeling and things like that. So very powerful algorithms and SageMaker makes very easy for you to use them. So if after today uh, you are excited and you want to take your AWS knowledge and skills to the next level, uh, these are some of the options that are available to you. Uh, to gain more confidence and hands-on experience with AWS, uh, please watch uh, instructional videos and explore the self-place labs. You can uh, do it without any instructor. Uh, additionally, you can attend our in instructor-led classes which are delivered by very qualified AWS trainers. Uh, they will teach you how to design, deploy, and operate highly efficient and cost-effective and secure applications on AWS. And last but not least, if you know AWS, uh, earn certification, apply for certifications and get them. They are very valued in the industry. So uh, we are at the end of our uh, session. Uh, I would like to thank you to uh, uh, because you uh, stuck with uh, me till the end. It is not a very entertaining topic, I understand. But uh, uh, all these details are uh, very important when you're trying to solve uh, machine learning problems. And as you know, machine learning has potential to impact uh, businesses in an unimagined or rather a very, very significant way. Uh, so thank you. I hope this uh, session was useful. Uh, take some time to please provide us feedback so that we know what to do better next time. Thank you very much. Bye.